Welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We open with our confession this morning. We have not loved you with all our hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not responded to your promise. We have put up walls to keep people at a distance. We have failed to respond when someone is hurting. We have, have not, not responded, responded to your promise. We are captured by our desire for material wealth. We forget those who do not have food or shelter. We, we have, have not, not responded, responded to your promise. We abuse the gifts of your creation. We destroy your beauty out of ignorance and greed. We have, we have not, not responded, responded to your promise. We fail to respond to your call to do justice. We seek only comfort for ourselves. We, we have, have not, not responded, responded to your promise. promise. We are broken, but God's promises are not. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. God's promise calls us together for a reason. We are called. We are called. Let us pray. 
O God, form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. our children up here for the sung word this morning. Our Sunday school is going to be singing to you. Down. Um, I want to take this opportunity to get my mic up before I start talking. So this is the last Sunday of our Sunday school, and I want uh, to recognize our uh, Sunday school staff this morning. Um, 
Our uh, Board of Ed Education, our Education Committee uh, is uh, Lori Gajkowski and Jen Kolosik. And um, you want to help me with our people. Oh, yeah, okay. So would you stand as I call your name? Julie Fosnott, Becky Kruger, Joy Moling, Shannon Fagerhog, Pam Kaufman, Carrie Fagerhog, Lori Gajkowski, and Lisa Bergeline. Please, uh, let's give them a hand. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> Good morning. Can I have you guys come sit down here? So then you can see the picture and Good morning. Today we're going to read a story that is not in the bulletin, but it's a story for today as well. And it's about Philip, who was one of Jesus' disciples, and a man from the country of Ethiopia, which is a country in Africa. And it's called Philip and the Ethiopian. Philip loved Jesus. He tried to act like Jesus would. Every day, Philip fed people who were poor and helped people who were sick. One day, God sent an angel to Philip. The angel told Philip to travel on a hot, dry road and share God's love along the way. So Philip sat along the road. It sure is hot and dry out, thought Philip. Then Philip looked up and was surprised. He saw a man from Ethiopia sitting in a chariot and reading a scroll. One of the horses was so tired, so the chariot had stopped. Philip knew he had a chance to do the go job God had given him. He ran up to the chariot and said, hello. The man invited him to sit next to him. I see you're reading a scroll, Philip said. Yes, it's a scroll with the words of the prophet Isaiah. But I don't really understand it the Ethiopian man said. They took turns reading the scroll, the scroll out loud. Philip talked about Jesus and explained what the scroll said. Soon, the horse felt rested and ready to trot. Philip stayed in the chariot. It was a bouncy ride. The man from Ethiopia bumped into Philip as he said, tell me more about Jesus. Philip told him Jesus was the son of God. He came to earth and saved us. The Ethiopian man was so amazed that he wanted to be baptized. But where could they find some water for baptism on that hot, dry road? The surprises just kept coming that day. Philip and the man found a pool of water. Philip baptized the man, and God's love filled the man's heart. The man told Philip that he would share the good news about Jesus with everyone. Philip was happy to serve God. What would you say if someone asked you the question that the Ethiopian men asked? Who was Jesus? What would you say? Don't 
don't be bashful. But what do you say? Who was Jesus? Would, would you say the Son of God? Huh? Well, you think about it. And as you go about your week, you um, show others and tell others about who Jesus was, okay? You can do it through your actions, by being kind and helpful. So I want you to do that this week, okay? And I would like people in the pews to get out, out the Taking Faith home. And I want you to read with me the scripture verse for the week along with a prayer for the week. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Let us pray. Loving God, just as you reached out to the Ethiopian eunuch and claimed him as your own in baptism, help your church to share your love throughout the world. Amen. And on the other side, I invite you all to do the, do the stuff at home and then with a the service. Um, as you meet people in your daily activities, find ways through your words and actions to communicate God's love with them. Whose life can you touch today with the freedom of the gospel that has conquered sin and death? And pray for the Christian outreach throughout the world. So have a good week and share God's love this week, okay? You may go. Thank you for coming. Our gospel this morning is from John chapter 15, verses 1 to 8. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it more, bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Before we are born, we are literally tied to our mothers, receiving nourishment in our very life from them. But even after we are born, we are dependent on others for our every need. Of course, all of us 
reach that point in our life where we say, I can do it myself. In holy baptism, we are grafted into God's family, into his body. But even before that, we take our life from him. He created us, and we belong to him. But just as that two-year-old or that four-year-old wants to go it on our own, we too may come to the point, as did Adam and Eve, where we say, I can do it myself. We begin to mistrust God's guidance and God's word and God's voice in our lives. For that reason, Jesus died. That in his words, as he is lifted up, we all, all people might be drawn back to him where we belong. Last week we talked about sheep and how Jesus is the shepherd who leads us beside still waters, who feeds us in green pastures, who leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. This morning, we go from shepherd to vine. Jesus is a vine that feeds us, nourishes us, gives us life, and allows us to bear fruit for his kingdom. Now, surely to those whom Jesus first spoke, his disciples, they needed the vine in order to do the mighty works that they accomplished. Healing people as Jesus did. Raising them from the dead as Jesus did. Proclaiming the good news of the kingdom as Jesus did. Surely Stephen needed to know he was nourished by the vine as he stood threatened by death, by execution, by stoning. He needed to know about the vine and about the eternal life that Jesus brings, a life that goes beyond death when we dare to bear fruit in his name. Now, we don't have to go to such heroic means as a Stephen or even as a Peter or a Paul Each of us has opportunities to bear fruit for God's kingdom, nurturing children in the faith and trust in God as our Sunday school teachers have been doing this year and as you as parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and brothers and sisters are called to do as well. Serving the elderly, bringing them joy and compassion and recognition, attention. Comforting the mourning and strengthening those who put themselves in the line of danger and even death. Now we can say, oh, I can do that. But even the best of us come to those times where the burden of bearing fruit becomes overwhelming whether we're teachers or parents or chaplains or nurses or business people or whatever our calling is in life, bearing fruit for God can be an overwhelming task. Where do we even begin? How do we even begin to say the name? Which of us, when called upon to say, who is Jesus in our everyday life, would be able to respond with an affirming word? Instead of, I can do it, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I am nourished by the vine, strengthened by his word, empowered by his spirit. Otherwise, I can do nothing. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. You take your life from me and bear fruit in my name. It's only the end of April, but already people are making plans for summer fun in the sun, I'm guessing. And as we go to pursue that fun as as our reward for hard labor, 
It's easy to become detached from the vine, to, to become detached and removed from the body, which gives us life. I've had several people who from time to time have said, you know, if, I don't, if I'm not in church on Sunday morning, I just don't feel like my week is going the way it needs to. If I'm away from my Christian brothers or sisters, I lose track of my purpose. So how do we keep attached to the vine as we go our separate ways over the summer months? Various ways. Being in the Word with our families and alone through the Bible itself or Bible story books as, as, as Holly read from this morning or as our, our, our camp families are going to be selling uh, following worship today. Being in the Word, receiving life from Jesus himself, from God's Word Taking the time day by day to dip into his word uh, through devotion books, whatever you might have. Or on the road, listening to Christian music or speakers through modern technologies. Worshiping wherever you might find yourself on a given Sunday or Saturday night or Wednesday evening. Maybe even here. Or at camp, refreshing your soul in the great outdoors while being nourished by God's word and by his presence. <clears throat> Using, as I said, modern technologies to, to, to hear God's word, to read it, to, 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 uh, to pray. There are prayer apps out there right now. Praying and meditating and, and, and thinking about God and talking to him as we go about our daily tasks in the summer. Knowing that if we become detached from the vine, we can be easily be devoured by the forces around us. But attached to the vine, we can continue to grow and bear fruit for him and for his kingdom. Fruit that Paul describes as joy, Peace, patience, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, self-control, love. Or as Jesus himself described, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. That's the fruit that God desires of us, that we might do the kinds of things that he did in his walk, reaching out to people who feel abandoned, and lonely and threatened, reaching out with the good news of God that people are starving, thirsting to hear. And should we become detached, should we fall to the earth and succumb to the elements God has promised, he will not leave us alone, but he will pursue us and embrace us and surround us with his love bring us back to the fold, to bring us back to the vineyard, that we and him together might shine. Amen. We're going to sing now the song that we practiced before worship. This is another song by Dakota Road, who wrote our liturgy. Instead of being about a vine, it's about a tree. But the sentiment is the same, be connected to God's word, to Jesus, and the water of life.
highlight some of our announcements this morning. Special offering today will go to uh, help build our Savior's campership fund. Some of you heard Lori talk about that last week. We want to try and expand beyond just the confirmation students into our elementary age and, and adult and elderly. And there's all kinds of camping opportunities out there, but they can be a little pricey. And so we want to help out with that. And these uh, gifts will go to help make that happen. Reminder of the Salad Supper this Wednesday evening. If you have not signed up, please do so in the fellowship hall. Bring a friend. Also, uh, someone will be making their way around during the fellowship time today uh, to help people sign up for rodeo concessions. These concessions uh, <clears throat> are divided among the congregations to help with the ministries in this community. And, uh, but they need workers We've got a wedding this weekend. I don't know. Do you know who's getting married, Brian? No. <laughs> Daisha Berglin's getting married this weekend, this Saturday, and uh, you all are invited as uh, you have the opportunity to share in that uh, wonderful event. Please note what's going on in our uh, church worldwide. Uh, folks in Nicaragua are... Uh, in the midst of some political unrest, and uh, it's a challenge to the church to continue to, to bear fruit in the midst of that uh, con uh, conflict, so uh, please pray for them as well. In our prayers this morning, uh, we include Lydia Behrens, who's uh, having uh, some health issues, also uh, Natalie Broadcorb, who's having cancer surgery uh, this week, so uh, our prayers are with both of those. Any other announcements that we need to lift up this morning? We've been trying to do this for about a month or two, but uh, Bonnie Cook is going to come and uh, bless us this morning with uh, um, a faith offering. Good morning. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I believe in the Holy Spirit, three in one, one God. God can use everything from a shattered spirit to a stubbed toe in order to teach us and change our hearts. Throughout our lives, we all endure tragedies. For me, whenever something that touched my heart or hurt my heart, or completely confused me. I turned to God to either give thanks or vent my frustration or beg for help in understanding. I usually didn't have the patience to wait for the answer, or if I heard it, I didn't truly contemplate what it means. I have had many tests to my faith throughout my life. Childhood was hard and definitely tested me, and to a large extent shaped how I view people. But the greatest test of my faith sorry. The greatest test to my faith came in 1988 with the birth, and four and a half months later, the loss of our beautiful son Dustin. My faith, my world, and my life as I knew it would never be the same. I was devastated, shattered, angry, lost, and broken. I found strength in my husband, Deech, and our other two children, Travis and Nicole. They needed me, we needed each other, and we needed our faith to be strong and for the grace of God to heal us. It took a long time for the heartache to become bearable, for the healing to help. And after the storm, God was still there, waiting for my heart to see his light. I finally let go of the useless anger and the need to know why, and just trusted that he had a plan for me, for my family, and for Dustin. 
and I just had to trust my faith and finally, truly accept God into my life. When I finally let go, God lifted me up. There has been much loss over the years for our families, but there has been great joy and so many beautiful memories shared with family and friends. My faith has grown over the years and made me stronger, more patient. I can listen with an open heart, an open mind, and see things and people more clearly. I can love those who have needed my forgiveness. I have learned that things are revealed in his time. We all say that, but I truly believe that his plan is perfect. I have tried harder over the years to know him, and yet I continue to fail him every day. But every day, his word, with his word, and because of his word, I try again. Because this church reached out to us in a time of turmoil. Some of you may not even know that you did. With love and compassion for another in need, my sister, our decision to reach back and become working members of this church and to be part of this church family was very easy. Faith is all we really need. Faith leads us in his path, and that path has led us here to your church. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, God is indeed bearing fruit through this congregation and through your witness. And I'll take our offering.
always got something to offer. Young and old, the prince and the pauper. Everybody's got something to offer in the name of the Lord. We say together, in response to your promise of life, we offer our life. In response to your promise of love, we offer our love. In response to all your promises, we offer our gifts. Standing before God and given new life by the risen Christ, let us pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit intercedes for us with signs to deep, for words to express. Oh, oh, oh. For your church, life giving God, that it may remain rooted in you and bear the fruit of love for one another through worship, mission, and service. God of new life. For the world you crown with mercy, that it would be rescued from destruction and anger and held in unity to the works of justice and peace, the God of new life. Hear our for those who wait patiently for relief from their burdens, for those who long for their health to be restored, especially Lydia and Natalie, that, may, may, that they might find comfort in the abiding presence of Jesus, God of new life. For those who receive the prayer shawls before us this day, that they might be comforted and surrounded by your love, God of new life. For those who are about to graduate from college and universities, that you might guide them in their callings, God of new life. For this congregation nourished in word and sacrament and bearing fruit, that you would lead us to care for the hungry the homeless, and all who are easily overlooked. God of new life. For the saints of every time and place that your mercy revealed in their lives might sustain us until the day when we join them in eternal praise to you. God of new life. Hear our prayers, gracious God, and receive them for the sake of your crucified and risen Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The Spirit intercedes for us with signs to deep, for words to express. Oh, oh, oh. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's go out into the world and make it a
say together, let's go out with God's love to nurture us, with God's peace to comfort us, and with God's truth to guide us, remembering God promises to be with us always, and God's people said, Amen. Amen.